So our goal today with this session is really to give you guys some tools and inspiration to promote your own creative endeavors or the creative endeavors of others. So I want to start by seeing a, a, you raise your hands with degree programs. We have entertainment business represented here. All right, music business. All right, do we have any art students of some sort? Awesome. Um, how about game development or film? A few people, awesome, okay, great. So this gives us an idea of our audience and who we're speaking to. Um, hopefully, you know, if you're not trying to put yourself out there as a creative, you might be representing someone else and these tips that we provide for you can really span across all different types of art, whether it be music or something more visual. Um, digital marketing is a very broad term. It refers to various digital promotion techniques deployed to reach customers via digital technology, such as the internet, smartphones, iPads, and more. And digital marketing is embodied by an extensive selection of service, product, and brand marketing tactics, which mainly use the internet as the core promotional medium, in addition to mobile and traditional TV and radio. So we're gonna really delve into this topic and um, hopefully we'll share some useful information. So I wanna start off by asking our panelists, how has technology changed our marketing and how artists connect with the world today? I'll jump in. Um, <laughs> I come from the traditional media world, which means that, you know, she talked a little bit about being on radio. I made records. I published a magazine, which we had to get printed and then move to various parts of the country. And clearly, the most powerful thing, and I think a lot of us overlook it every day because it's so ubiquitous to have all of these tools in front of us that we kind of take it for granted and we use it, you know, in our daily activities, but not necessarily in a business sense. And I think the most powerful thing that has happened is that all of these barriers to entry, whether it be getting on radio, whether it be getting in print like Rolling Stone or Billboard, or getting on MTV, even making a video to potentially get on MTV, which isn't gonna happen unless you're a huge star, have now diminished. So now the challenge is not can you get in, but can you do interesting things to get attention? And that's your job as a creative. I would say not only that, but I know when I was a little kid growing up, the only way I would learn about artists that I liked or even new artists would be waiting for a magazine to come every month or, you know, maybe yet hearing something on the radio. Now, you know, you can go and you, you go and do a search for even a broad term and all these things are going to come up and you can just click around. You can, you know, lose yourself for hours or days, depending, uh, and, and just discover things. And you could never have done that before. Artists are at your fingertips. Yeah, and um, actually, uh, when I was with Atlantic, that was back before uh, we had iTunes and everything, and uh, it's it's changed tremendously, and I think it's for the better. It's definitely for the better for um, indie artists, for people that want to get out there, that people want, to, you know, people that want to really do it themselves. Uh, this is the time to do it because technology is now allowing that, and it's very um, it's very motivating. Uh, I think for our younger artists and people that are up and coming uh, to have access to the internet and um, iTunes and, and everything out there, all the wonderful tools and technologies that we can use now. It's really changed the whole industry. And um, I, I, think it's, I think it's amazing. Yeah, so I'm really excited. Um, everybody knows about social media now. I mean, I'm, most of us here are on social media in some aspect. What do you think are some of the most important social media platforms for creatives to, to be on and to get involved with? Well, I'd say most people are probably on Facebook or Twitter or Instagram. Those are is some of the, the more popular ones. But I think that there's also, everyone also knows Pinterest. Uh, all of them, I mean, they're all used differently. So maybe necessarily what works for one artist doesn't work for another. However, I think a presence across them is very, very important. However, you shouldn't overlook things such as uh, even if you're going to use a Kickstarter, depending on you know what what level you're at and what you're trying to achieve. Uh, there, there's so many things you can make uh, YouTube. You can make YouTube be social for you if you want to. If you have a band you're trying to promote, you can have them make a playlist of relevant artists or inspirational things. And there's so many other platforms out there that you can use. And even if you don't think of them as being necessarily social, you're just seeing it as a thing to to host your content. Maybe think about how you can incorporate it with something else you're doing. And I would also say that uh, 
if you're using something like Twitter or Facebook, you should also consider something like a, a Hootsuite, something where you can actually uh, schedule your posts ahead of time, making your content plans, and that way you're not there, you know, day by day, making sure that you have something going, that you're not, you don't have these huge gaps in time because you didn't post anything. So it, it's it's part of, it's not its own uh, social media platform per se, but it, it, you integrate it all together and make a complete package. Okay, well, I just want to put it out there to be careful when you use social media. You don't want to just uh, say, oh, well, you know, I have this new artist that I'm representing. We're going to go ahead and put them on all the social media platforms and just open up a Facebook, a Twitter, a Pinterest, an Instagram, a YouTube, uh, and then keep going. You're right. You, you don't want to do that. You really want to use what we call the stair-step method, where you start with one you start with one social media platform, like you might want to start with YouTube, or you might want to start with Twitter or Facebook, and you, you really build that fan base, and you really, and you could start with two, but you don't want to, you don't want to just spread yourself too thin where you don't have time to do the promotion, to do the marketing, and to put stuff out there on, and really focus on one or two. That will help you to build that base, and then you can move that base into the other platforms and start sharing with them that now you're using a Pinterest board. Um, Lady Antebellum has a really good Pinterest board. If you're interested in, in taking a look at what other artists are doing that's successful with Pinterest, um, you know, they put up boards for the fans, they put up boards for different tours, they put up boards for the different band members. Those are all good ideas. But really just focus on a, one or two platforms and build it, and then once you have a good, like, at least 1,000 fans on there that are paying attention, then move it to the next one and the next one and build them from there. But never spread yourself too thin because then you'll just overwhelm yourself and not actually do anything because you'll say, well, nobody's listening to my tweets. Well, you were on Facebook all day today. You weren't really paying attention to Twitter for the past two, three days. So you really need to just make sure that you focus in and you, you have a plan every day. So I always have artists schedule in you know, here's your daily plan. In the morning, you're going to do Facebook and you're going to do Twitter. In the afternoon, you'll check back on the comments. And then we'll have a YouTube post every um, week where we, um, we come up with some different, you know, ideas that they can play around with, such as recording in the studio. And they'll post that on YouTube or we'll use Ustream. You know, there's so many different things you can use. Just don't overwhelm yourself with all of them at first. Start with one or two, build. So. And I think it's also worth taking into account that it's all about your audience, right? So this kind of goes outside of the term digital and just marketing. You know, marketing starts, first of all, first and foremost, with a good product. And in the era that we're in today, because of the fact that you can continue to create and you don't have the constraints of having to make that album that has to, you know, uh, have a lot of money spent behind it for a big push for that street date. Instead, you could continue to create and use whatever method works for your audience. You know, I always, and I've done this for years, I've always shared, as far as I'm concerned, the three C's of artist development today, which are to create, to connect, which is all the things that we just talked about, and then to cultivate those relationships, regardless of whether I'm Pinterest or Instagram or Facebook or Twitter, et cetera. But in regards to platforms for artists, you know, things like Reverb Nation, even though I know a lot of artists have them, they don't use it to its full capacity. There's so many different things you could do on that, including aggregate emails, provide promotions for those emails, right? Everybody's about free music, but are you really wanting to give it away free or do you want to get something? And that something is some type of connection directly to your audience. Because I think one of the most important things to remember, if we've learned anything from MySpace, even though they've clearly been high hopes to bring it back, <laughs> is that at one point it was the most important thing almost ever for an independent artist. And today, most folks don't even think about it. You know, so when you spend all this time and energy, not that there's anything wrong with Twitter, whatever works for you, Facebook, et cetera, et cetera, at the end of the day, if that goes away or if it becomes less impactful or, or just doesn't matter in general anymore to your audience, you kind of have to start from scratch. If you have a way to gather that information to contact them directly, as far as I'm concerned, that's the most important social network because you could always get back to them, regardless of who's the hottest social platform. Something to think about. 
Yeah, I like that you stress the, the way you connect, right? It's all about connection. I think that's really the benefit that social media adds is it's, like, it's a two-way communication that you're having with your fans, right? And that's what you have, you have to keep it that way, right? You have to, it's not just you blasting out information about yourself all the time, although we want to sell products and we want to sell things. It's also about, you know, communicating and giving back and keeping that conversation going through social media. Yeah, so. and I have one thing to add to that. Um, really, I think it's really important to get the email address of all of your fans or all of your whoever you might be targeting, get their email address. Go go beyond just the social platforms because those social platforms, like Israel was just saying, they can go away, or you could lose your account. Or you know, I've I've seen some terrible things happen with people's you know Facebook pages, not profiles. I'm talking about pages, business pages, where all of a sudden everything was just gone. Right. Um, so make sure you get people's email addresses, and then you have that list, and you're building that list, and you have those on your computer, and you also have those you know, maybe in Reverb Nation or a newsletter system or something. You need to have a backup plan in the cloud and also on your computer because we lose stuff from our computers sometimes. So have the two different ways. Anyways. Absolutely. Yeah, okay. yeah that, and that's a great tip because I, I was at a digital marketing panel for the American Marketing Association a few weeks ago. And one of the things that they mentioned was this Princeton study that was just put out um, where they said that Facebook is expected to decline by 80% in the next like three years. That's crazy. That's that's a pretty high statistic. So that just goes to show that's like the most popular social network right now. Yeah. But in a few years, it probably won't be. You know. So like you really have to be aware. So collecting email addresses is build yeah. a website. Yeah. And build, build a, a website. website. Yeah. I Absolutely. think that's why Facebook is um, moving in on other apps for um, their stock. Mm -hmm. You know, they just mm -hmm. bought WhatsApp. I think yesterday for sixteen mil billion. Yes. Sixteen billion. They tried to buy Snapchat about for three billion. Mm -hmm. So they're trying to move forward um, because they know that things are changing. Absolutely. So. Very good. So what are some of the common mistakes that you see artists doing on social platforms? Do you see anything that, maybe some examples or things that could go awry? Yeah. Um, well, one, one of the main things is um, promoting too much, saying, buy my album, buy my album, come, come to my show. It's like begging. Don't do that. Um, it really, you're supposed to be giving and connecting. Right, that's what fans want. When you're a fan of an artist, what do you want from that artist? Do you want them to ask you to constantly buy things from them or do you want them to really connect with you and, and show you what they're doing, right? Selfies are the big thing. Um, I know it, it sounds weird, but um, I don't know if any of you are fans of James Franco, but he wrote an article on uh, the selfies and how important they are for celebrities. Really, um, you gotta get away from constantly trying to get people to buy and think about what do my fans want? They, want? they want interaction, they want personal interaction, they wanna see selfies, they wanna see your cat, they wanna see what you're doing backstage, they wanna, they wanna see what the artist is doing when they're recording, how they're talking, what is their personality? You know, it's all about the connection. So that's, that's one of the problems I see with a lot of small artists is they, they, don't think, they don't think about that personal connection. They try to get out of that and they try to think more celebrity. Well, celebrity's a big person. So if they're, they're kind of disconnected from everybody, so they're all about making money, and, but that's not how it is. The superstar needs to come down and to the level of the fans and say, hey, I'm with you. You know, the reason you like my music is because you connect with me and try to think on a more personal basis when you're doing promotion. Spend more, spend 80% of your time connecting with your audience and only 10 to 20 talking about stuff you're doing to make, you know, try to make money, such as sponsorships and, you know, getting people to go to iTunes and getting people to come out to your shows, try to spend only about 10 to 20% of the time talking about that because really that's not what it's about. It's about the connection, so. I think, the, and, and I agree with all those points, but I think the number one mistake, and I think we, maybe many of us have been uh, guilty of this, is to think because we build it, because we put it up, that they're gonna come. And clearly, that's not enough. I don't care if, you know, they're folks that, you know, get their music on iTunes, and because it's available on iTunes, all of a sudden they just expect there to be sales, but they've done nothing to create interest, to create awareness, um, put up a video on YouTube, but you don't drive any traction to it. You know, the, at the end of the day, it's your job to do things that are creative, and most of the things that I see with artists that are trying to make a name for themselves unsuccessfully is what we've already heard, which is they beat you over the head with a selling 
uh, message and they don't give you anything. So value, what can you give somebody? Think about what inspires you to spend money on the products that you spend money on or time on the things that you spend, spend time on. Is it because somebody told you, hey, you got to look at this? Or is it because you found true value in that? Whether it be entertainment, whether it be knowledge, uh, whether it be something that you could share, you know, that's your job to engage and provide some type of value. And, and by the way, as a side note, this also extends to the physical side. That's why we see so much growth in vinyl because vinyl gives so much more value that folks are willing to spend that 20, 30 bucks when they can still get that music for free on SoundCloud. Yes, yeah, so I'm going to say, uh, and this goes for small artists and huge superstars, you definitely do want to create content and have interaction. There's also such a thing as oversharing. Uh, you don't necessarily need to tell everyone everything you're doing, especially when the more personal it gets, maybe we don't need to see that or hear that because guess what? Even when you delete it, someone screenshotted it and it lives on the internet forever. <laughs> uh, if anyone ever goes on Reddit, there's a picture of Beyonce that, and she told someone that she wanted deleted from the internet, guess what, that, no. That picture, because she said that, now shows up even more. It's just every now and then, it's, hey, look, remember this picture, guys? So be careful, be careful what you say, be careful what you're posting. Uh, we, we don't need to know absolutely everything. Uh, a lot of, so when I worked for Sony Music, I spent a good maybe half of my, my time uh, running this, the official Sony Music Twitter account, Facebook account, we did Pinterest, we made Spotify playlists. We, if you guys remember Turntable FM, we had a turntable room <laughs> uh, where you could come hang out with us and you know DJ. Almost all of my tweets, almost all of my posts had to do with check out this news article or look at this, look at this photo that maybe, uh, maybe we aren't using as an official promo photo, but the artist okay, and it's kind of almost like a behind the scenes shot of the official shot or asking trivia questions, you know, like what, uh, you know, today, what, you know, what song did Michael Jackson record? Or, you know, what do you guys think should be Avril Lavigne's next single? Just stuff like that. Just you ask questions mm -hmm. to get interaction from people. And it goes so far in the conversation. Even if, even if you don't even write back to them after they respond that first time, you're going to see a huge jump in people uh, just even... Talk, like sending you things. You, you might start you know, getting really good at finding you know, stuff about your artists or yourselves or whoever you're promoting, but then you, when you have those conversations, suddenly you're going to get a fan say, look at this thing I found, and then that's when you, know, you start finding relevant things that you can retweet, and, and you, you have a real community and a following, and it, it's, it can become a huge machine. Yeah, and I, I have something to add to that. She mentioned asking questions, and absolutely, uh, if you look at any of the superstars, any of the big bands, they have... They have people doing this stuff for them, and they, they always ask the fans questions, and they, they also tell the fans what to do. They say, hey, share this, or click this, check out our YouTube video. They're constantly telling you what to do. They don't just put it up, right? And they don't just talk about it, but they actually tell you what to do. So ask questions and also um, use call to action. Yeah. Tell people what to do, and then they're more likely to do it. Absolutely. So yeah, cool. <laughs> if I could just add something to call to action, how many people uh, here are familiar with uh, Nipsey Hussle? All right, so those that are familiar probably know the story about the proud to pay handle campaign and a hashtag campaign. And, and think about that for a moment. For those folks that don't know, here's an artist that created a physical product, a CD, a mixtape that he was selling for a hundred bucks. Think about that for a moment. The audacity for somebody to sell a CD, a mixtape at that, when everybody knows if you're in hip hop, you can get them free just about anywhere, including that PIF, that's, you know, platform just for that. So that story in and of itself, first of all, he told his fans, you know, proud to pay, be proud to pay, be proud to support something that you believe in, creating that movement. Now think about this for a moment. The folks that, you know, aren't with it, that think it's silly, that maybe mock it, are still going to spread that message because it's so, it seems so outrageous. It's something worth spreading that they also spread it. And for those folks that don't want to buy it, of course, they're going to download the music as well. The reality is that even though we're talking about a physical product, because of this campaign that for the most part he launched online with this hashtag uh, 
um, uh, um, uh, be proud to pay, he was able to sell a thousand, think about this for a moment, a thousand CDs at a hundred bucks a pop. He doesn't need to sell a hundred thousand songs. He sold a hundred, or excuse me, a thousand CDs at a hundred bucks a pop. Now, I don't care who you are, a hundred G's is some serious money. And think about that for a moment. It only took a thousand fans, right? However, everybody else spread that message. That's a great example. Mm -hmm. so, That's awesome. Excellent. So we've talked a lot about social media, and social media can be an awesome tool, excellent tool, and it's free other than the time and energy that you have to put into it to cultivate. Um, but what are some of the other important digital platforms that you recommend all creatives to be on? I, I still I stand firmly by have a website, even if it's just uh, a little landing page, which is basically just a page with maybe an image or some basic information on it, because guess what? When you have that, you own that. Like we mentioned earlier, social media can go away. You can get banned for something, you know, whatever. You could lose all your information. Have a website, even, even if it's just, you know, we mentioned having, collecting email addresses. When you have that user base, just have, have something. You can go to, if you don't know HTML, that's fine. Uh, you can go, there, there's all kinds of places like Wix or Drupal Gardens or uh, all kinds of places that will help you build that. And it's just kind of like drag and drop and, and boom, there you go. So I would say absolutely have that of anything. Just please have that. Um, <laughs> but th then there's also, we talked about, um, what else have we talked about? Went over a few other ones. And I'll go turn that over to you. I got, oh, really, SoundCloud? I got really excited about websites. Yeah, yeah, absolutely SoundCloud. No, go ahead. Yeah, I think um, clearly, I mean, anyone that's familiar with music and is a musician or is an artist or is a fan of artists, I'm sure you're familiar with SoundCloud, you know, and if you think about SoundCloud as the YouTube for music, you know, how easy it is to use that as a way to not only spread your music, but to allow your fans to take that embed code and spread your music. So that's definitely an important platform. Um, the other thing that I think is, you know, clearly everybody knows about it, but I think is definitely going to emerge as a social platform for artists. It already kind of is, and it's going to be more for independent artists, um, is Spotify. How many folks use Spotify? I mean, think about that for a moment. If you're an artist, you could have a profile. When you have a profile, your entire discography comes up. Uh, they recently announced that you could now connect any kind of merchandise um, touring, any kind of events that you're doing, et cetera, et cetera. And even if, as a side note, if you don't have the clout maybe, or maybe the materials to do all that kind of stuff, what about just creating playlists, right? Everybody here yes. could create a playlist and share it. If you're an artist, that's, that's not to say that you're going to create a playlist of just your stuff, but create a playlist of things that you really believe in that you're a fan of, and then also include your music. I mean, you got to be your you know, best fan and then spread that as well. And I think that that allows fans to engage with you and also do what they love to do, which is listen to music. So think about Sp Spotify as a social platform, if you're an artist. Okay, great. I know from a, a visual art standpoint, as far as not, because yeah, I know we have a few of you guys in here, I think I'm a big fan of Tumblr. I think Tumblr is a great, a great resource for sharing anything visual. Um, obviously, you know, Pinterest as well, but I just recommend that you explore that. A lot of people think of blogs as being like written content all the time, but blogs can be anything. Blogs can be a video that you post to YouTube, which YouTube is a huge, I mean, it's like the number two search engine that's used for finding stuff. You need to have content on YouTube. So like, whether it be you like recording your own music or having something visual there, I think that's a great tool as well. So you mentioned websites and things of that nature. Um, another big trend right now is mobile applications and things of that sort. Um, what do you guys think are the most important things to remember when designing a website or a mobile app or uh, you know, just developing an online presence? That, I mean, you wanna go ahead? It's a okay. big one, you can start. All right, well, so I have the, the perspective of working with Sony Music, obviously, then also working with smaller artists. I think one thing you have to keep in mind is depending on your relation to the, to the artist, let's say you're not the artist and you are, you're helping them, you're just doing the digital marketing. Uh, you need to keep in mind that the artist maybe isn't gonna be really great at telling you what they want. They might think that they are. They might say they want something awesome with colors 
the, you know, and all, all these things. You're like, okay, I think, I think I know what you want. And you build it and you show it to them and they're like, no, this is all wrong. For example, I had an artist that did not want the color red anywhere on their web website. Huge artist, old legacy artist. Can't use the color red, okay? Uh, we had another artist that would say you can't, uh, you know, use these words anywhere on the website. And that's not just news posts, that's in menu items or uh, any, uh, any biography, anything that you do. So you have to keep in mind that the, the creative mind is uh, a little unorthodox sometimes. I think you guys are in a great position. This is a creative school, so you all kind of have that bug in you somewhere anyway. But you have to keep in mind that uh, who you're working for is uh, constantly, they're, they're constantly gonna be thinking about something else and changing their minds. And sometimes it's gonna be frustrating, but as long as you can, you can rein that in and you can explain what you're doing and you know why you're doing it and you can show them why you did it and how great it is, I think that's gonna get you really, really far. As long as you're confident in it and you, you can see through their vision into what needs to happen. It's really important. Um, yeah, with uh, websites, you need to have your own website, your own domain hosted, that you pay the hosting. Uh, whether you do it yourself as an artist, whether you do it as a manager or a label, you need your own stuff. Don't go to Bandcamp and then go bandcamp.com backslash the band's name or artist name. Um, if you have a Bandcamp site, which you should, um, it's, it's a pretty good platform, um, you can use their plugins on if you use WordPress, for example. WordPress is a content management system where you can put together your own website. Um, I always use WordPress to build websites. I think WordPress is great. There's two WordPresses, don't get confused. WordPress.com, WordPress.org. I always use .org. You, you download your own WordPress site and you use it and you upload it into your hosting. Um, or if you have a good hosting account like with um, Let's see, I use HostGator right now. On the back end, they let you open up WordPress or they let you open up Drupal or Joomla or any of those content management systems to build your own site right there on the, it's really easy. Um, there's a little bit of learning, learning curve, but you can watch, you know, and you have Linda here, lynda.com, where you can learn about using this stuff and everything. But you can even go to uh, YouTube and learn. But really, you need to have your own domain name, your own host. And um, it's not very expensive. You know, you could pay a few dollars a month for hosting. And you register the domain name, and that's like 10 bucks a year. Not bad, right? Um, you don't need to go pay any other company to put it together for you. Um, you can just do it all through Bandcamp and WordPress, pretty much. Mm -hmm. um, but you need to make sure that you have the tabs on the top of the page, and you need to have the social media buttons at the top of the page. And you also need a newsletter sign-up form on every single page of the website. Um, I notice when a lot of indie artists show me their websites, it's like really dry, um, and you don't you don't see like the connections, right? You don't see the Facebook connections and the Twitter connection, the YouTube channel connection, and you don't see the newsletter, and you just don't see the simple things and the music. The music should be you should have a player, right, on the homepage. Um, there should be ways of interacting. If you look, a really good way to do any business is to look at what other people are doing that are successful. So really you should go and, and scout out those really successful artists and see what their websites look like and what it is they're doing right. Usually there's a lot of interactive features on their site that, that creates a stickiness and a sticky website is what keeps people around. It keeps them sticking around on the website. Mm -hmm. That stickiness is interaction, connection, engagement, like discussion forums, uh, Ustream, right, where you're streaming live what the artist is doing, um, Instagram pictures coming up, uh, Twitter feed coming up, and all those are called, um, a lot of those are called word pr uh, plugins on WordPress. So those plugins are like apps, where you just say, hey, I wanna use Twitter, and they just put in your handle and your password, okay, and now it pops up, and it's pretty easy. Um, so you really need to have all of that stuff, that enga those engagement factors on your website. They're so, so important. Don't make a dry website, it's not just a brochure. Um, make sure that there's ways to listen, there's ways to watch, there's ways for people to connect and engage. So, there you go. Yeah, excellent points. And, and kind of going back to the stickiness factor, I kind of think about, as a side note, uh, we put our first website up in 96, I think. So that's like ancient history in <laughs> online. That's like a century. Um, uh, so I'm an OG. I mean, yeah, beyond Google. Uh, BG, before Google. Um, but one of the things that I think is worth noting, again, learning lessons from things that have happened in the past. I remember there was a, a point where Flash 
sites were a really big deal where you had all this fancy animation and all this really cool, you know, type of stuff going on. And once you experience that as, as a visitor, like the next time you go, it's kind of old and you're not going to go a third and fourth time because you've already seen that the pizzazz is worn off. So at the end of the day, it is about content. It is about continuing to put things up and not have you know, a static site that really doesn't do anything. Otherwise, why would people visit there? You know, clearly you want to have all your links, but you also want to use it as your home base. You want to get people used to, your fans used to going back and saying, oh, well, what are they doing now? You know, what are they up to? You know, what have they posted? Mm -hmm. um, so definitely think about, you know, that in regards to content, always creating content uh, in the same way that uh, if you're a musician, you're always creating music, right? It's all about creating creative things that are going to get people to pay attention and come back, going back to the stickiness factor. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's a great segue into my next question, Israel. <laughs> so, I mean, being that you've talked so much about content and the importance of content, give us some examples of, uh, like, recommendations of types of content an artist can have on their website. Sure. I, I would say that I'm trying to think of... Um, a pretty cool one that I saw recently was a band, and now I hate to say this, the name escapes me. It'll hit me as soon as I finish telling my story. <laughs> but what I thought was fascinating about them was that I had never really heard of the band before, but I heard that this band created a, I'm an 80s kid, an 80s, a retro 8-bit video game, like something, you know, like from uh, between Atari and Nintendo. And I went on the site, and it was it was amazing. It was pretty cool. And they had multiple, you know, levels and layers. And while you're playing the game, even though I wasn't really a fan, I'm listening to their music and I'm getting engaged with who they are, with their brand. Uh, you know, so that is, if you think about this for a moment, that's content, right? Like they had to create that. They're not necessarily selling that, but they're using that to sell their other products, which are, of course, their brand, their music, the videos. As a matter of fact, what the other thing that I saw on their website was that they were, uh, that they made a short film, right? So think about that as well. When you make a music video, right, there's so many other things that you could do with video. I saw a, uh, an uh, artist the other day that had created a, everybody know what a stereogram is? It's like you look at it, for long enough, it kind of looks like noise, like snow on a TV, and then it kind of starts to form images. Well, they create, I mean, I don't know how much this would cost. I can't imagine it would cost a lot of money. I could be wrong, you know, but it was a video stereogram. So you watch this snow on the screen, and, you know, before you start really getting dizzy, you start to see all these weird images that are going along to the music, right? So, I mean, think about, you know, different types of things that you could do with your media. You know, years ago we were promoting an album and we created, and I see this a lot now, and, and we created a movie trailer. We didn't have a movie, but we created a movie trailer for the album. So people are watching this and they're like, what is this? What, you know, and it was really, you know, different. It had the stickiness factor, it had aliens in it and all this kind of stuff. <laughs> you know, so think about other types of media that you could easily create that's not going to cost you a lot of money that you could use to bring people into your other media and ultimately, next thing you know, they're you know, in your entire world. You know, they're immersed in your brand, if you will. Yeah. Well, with content, um, you wanna think about what it is that you enjoy watching, right? So what it is that the artist is doing. Hopefully they're working on an album or they're writing, right? And you can record that. You can take video of people recording in the studio. And after movies, we have the blooper reels usually come up, right? Um, you can do things like that where you just show outtakes every week or something. Um, you can create events, like uh, you should be connected to college radio. You should have a college radio campaign going on. And with that college radio campaign, you can go to these small local shows um, you know, at the college radio station with the artist and film the event and take pictures of the event and start posting those. Um, so make everything an event. You know, make it exciting because that's why the fans come there. They want to see excitement. They want to see what's going on. They want to see the music being made and promoted. They want to see behind the scenes. That's really important for, con you know, for creating content for the website, um, like a blog or something, a vlog, a video vlog. So, yeah. If I could add one more thing, you know, stop following the leader 
because I think, you know, historically, just in media and music, we see something that somebody does that's really cool, and then guess what? Everybody on the planet is doing it, and it's mm -hmm. not interesting anymore. And I can't tell you how many artists throughout the years, this is going back 20 plus years, you know, they're doing whatever the next artist did, but what they don't realize is that there's 100,000 other artists doing the same thing. Mm -hmm. You know, the most recent thing, I think, even though we all love Beyonce, was, you know, her releasing an album unannounced. And next, you know, I'm hearing artists talk about, I'm going to do that. Well, guess what? You're not Beyonce. <laughs> you don't have, you know, all this presence. I forget how many media um, uh, spots she was involved in over the course of that year, but it was into the thousands, not to mention millions of blog posts. You know, you don't have that. So you can't just, you know, say I'm going to release something because she did it and it worked for her. You know, so think about what works for you and also stop following the leader. I mean, if you're an artist or if you're working with creatives, be creative. Do something different. Do something that's worth getting attention. Yeah. I agree with all that. I'd also like to say that aside from using, you know, your actual creative abilities to do it, if you're ever really stuck for content, Think about what else is going on in the world that's maybe not directly related to you, but that you can kind of spin in your own direction. For example, I'm a big Walking Dead fan, so I was watching Walking Dead. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I forget. It was, this was, I think, last season, and there was an award show on at the time. I want to say it was the Grammys. I'm not really sure. And I'm on Twitter following along with, you know, their hashtag, seeing what's going on, watching Walking Dead. And all of a sudden, Oreo, which I don't follow, but did a sponsored post, tweeted... Uh, a photo, and it said uh, something about, I forget what their actual tagline was, but what they did was they took an Oreo, um, you know, if you take the one side off the cookie, you have, you have the, the frosty white filling, and then, like, you see the cookie behind it, but they had, so they had had a little cookie eye patch on it, and so it was the governor. I don't know if you guys, if you don't watch it, you have no idea what that means, but they made it relevant to me, and all of a sudden, you know, me and all my friends are retweeting Oreo that we don't ever, I don't care, you know, I'm not like an Oreo, I'm not even a cookie person, but this was like the coolest thing ever. And so they, whoever was doing that was on point with what was going on. They made it work for them somehow. And it's one of, like, this was over a year ago and I still remember it. It's still one of my favorite examples because it was just so cool how they did it. Uh, so I, I think that's something to keep in mind. Or even if, if you, if you're, even that's kind of, you're like, I don't know where to start. Look at even trending topics on Twitter to see what are people talking about. Can you, is this, can you somehow use this to your advantage if you can, you know, think of something um, that, that helps you but it's also, you know, s something quirky or if you have design skills, you can make a photo, use, use, the, use a trending hashtag, you know, but yeah, that's something you have to be on immediately. Obviously, if you do it tomorrow, it's not trending anymore. You kind of missed out. Mm -hmm. uh, but I think things like that are really important to think about and also, you have to keep in mind who your target audience is because it might not necessarily be you even. For example, if I'm trying to promote Tony Bennett, I'm probably not gonna go on Twitter and tweet, look at Tony Bennett, you know, petting this cat. I don't know that's what his fans are looking for. I don't know they're even on Twitter doing that. So, you know, you wanna keep in mind to keep it relevant. And then another point just is something that is a little bit more specific to an artist, but think about your artist's voice Think about the, the persona you're trying to put out there. One, make sure it's consistent across all of your platforms. And then two, make sure that anything you post, even if it's just, if even if it's just an image, make sure that it, it sticks with that. Because when you basically break a character, you're kind of taking away the mystique you built up with your fans. It's all of a sudden, it's like, oh, that, you, you see people tweet all the time, oh, that's corporate said that, that's not really that person. You know, you wanna, you, you, are that artist. Whether you are or not, guess what? You're that artist now, so you need to be them. Uh, for example, Britney Spears, uh, she has two websites. She has her music website that's run through Sony has uh, whoever posts her blog post, Britannica, who is someone that is the, is the number one Britney Spears fan. That's, that's her job, is to, to you know, hey, y'all, check this, you know, like, she's it. Italy, for example, because I come from international marketing, uh, really enjoyed the idea, wanted to get on her website, they made Brittily. So their version of their, their blogger is Brittily and does the exact same thing in all Italian. So keep that stuff in mind because it, fans will eat that up. Great examples. Yeah. I, did you have something to add? No? I love the whole idea of uh, newsjacking, like your example of using the Oreo yeah. and, and things of that nature. And I've 
just recently, I've seen a couple really great examples. And you guys familiar with Grubhub? Have you heard of that? Mm -hmm. Okay, they're it's all food based and. So Justin Bieber, he went to jail, as you guys probably know. <laughs> um, and he, and they took a, his mugshot and they photoshopped in a sandwich, and they did the hashtag celebrity grub shots, and it was, and it went viral, and everybody was sharing it. It was like the funniest thing. So I mean, things like that, or like you know Pharrell's hat at the Grammys, and RB tweeting out, you know, hey Pharrell, give us our hat back, okay? <laughs> That's funny. That's like, and it's creative, but like you said, it has to be in the moment. Yep. And it has to be relevant because, you know, yeah, we're talking about a couple days later because Arby's did that. But if they would have tweeted that like two or three days later, then the news is old news and it's not interesting or relevant anymore. So, um, but great, great concept. And you hear a lot of digital marketers now using that whole idea of, you know, um, news jacking and running with a story in real time, which is, which is great. Mm -hmm. So what are some of the important goals you think, um, you know, creative should have from a digital standpoint? What are some realistic, appropriate goals to work towards? I think that variety is good because you always have folks guessing. I think that despite the fact that you shouldn't expect people to come just because you built it or made it available, I think it's definitely important to, you know, be on iTunes and Amazon and Spotify, et cetera, et cetera, but also to have your own e-commerce, um, you know, solutions. So there's so many different services that allow you to sell all kinds of products and also share them, not only on your home site, whatever that is, but also, again, to allow your fans to spread it. So essentially making that store have the potential depending on your fan base, to go viral. I think that one of the beautiful things about where we are and, and the opening question about, you know, how has technology changed things is the fact that we are now liberated, I believe, from the standard configurations that we've had in place for, you know, tens of years. You know, first it was the phonogram and then we had the cassette, the 8-track, the CD, the DVD, the MP3. Today, because you don't have, you know, the constraints of having to have a product that's going to sit on a store shelf that looks and is sized just right and there's all other types of things that, you know, it takes to get it there. And we could talk about that uh, if anyone's interested afterwards. I teach the music merchandising class. But the beautiful thing about it is that now you could create, you know, whatever it is that you think is appropriate for you, you know? So if you're familiar, familiar with bands like The Flaming Lips and they release, you know, their music as skulls. They had a gummy skull recently, they had a chocolate skull and inside it is a USB, you know? And also the opportunity to make something available. We didn't have that before. Before it was you have this album and you have a, a, a ticket to a show. That was it. All the promotions were built around those two things. Today, we have something for every level of commitment. So if you have somebody that isn't really a fan, but maybe they're mildly interested, you know, they'll click on the YouTube video and, and, and take a look at the video and maybe forget about it, maybe spread it. You might have somebody that, you know, is, you know, maybe a little bit more committed and they'll go ahead and buy a single. Somebody else might buy the full album digitally. Somebody else might buy the vinyl record, which now is getting up into 20 and 30 bucks. And then of course you have those super diehard fans that are gonna buy those 100 plus dollar bundles. This is something that didn't really exist before. But now because you have the opportunity to be your own store and to position things and to create products, however it is that you want to make them available. And by the way, as a side note, taking advantage of things like Zazzle and CreateSpace um, and Cafe Press where you don't have to make products. The products are basically living virtually until somebody pays for them. And then at that one point, that one product gets made. In the future, even though we're seeing a little bit about it now, we're going to start seeing a lot more usage of 3D printing. Right, where you can print all kinds of interesting products, forget about on the internet, even right there in front of the fan at a merch table. You know, so think about, even though you want to think about all the ways that you're going to get people to care, to want to pay, but also think about creating products and not doing the same old stuff. Do things that are very specific to you and your brand. How many people here are familiar with Childish Gambino? 
For those folks that are, that are not familiar with Childish Cambino, recently he released his album, his album, you know, like everything else, it was a CD, but it also had a script that came with it. And even if you could care less about Childish Gambino, just out of curiosity, you might go to the micro site that they created with the entire script, which by the way, was also interactive and had all other kinds of media in it. You know, so think about, you know, different ways that you could use these tools that are so easily accessible. You know, it's not difficult to embed a video, but again, create something that is specific to your audience and then use the tiered model, right? So everything from, a BitTorrent site, whether you like it or not, somebody's gonna download it for free, to Spotify, to Amazon, to iTunes, and then to you know, the, the big things that your diehard fans are gonna get behind. Go to, this, go to your site and know that there's only a thousand of them out there and buy it. Yeah, and uh, thinking about goals, you really need a business plan as an artist. Um, each artist does need their own business plan, their own. In my class, we do the distribution plan. Uh, it's pretty much the same thing. You gotta come up with Specific goals on how to make money and what he's talking about with the, the multi-tiered package prices and stuff. Um, you have to go above and beyond selling music today because selling music is not really the ultimate goal on how you're going to make money. Uh, pretty Lights, any fans of Pretty Lights in here? Yeah, Pretty Lights, they're known for their big thing where they put their music on Pirate Bay and they promoted it on Pirate Bay. And um, the you know, they saw giving the music out as a service, as you know, that's that's what we promote. That's how we promote for people to buy our merchandise, for people to buy all the other things, to come to our shows and spend the money on the shows. Um, so you got to think bigger than just selling music today. You really have to have a goal that's a whole business idea. You know, what are the different creative ways that we can make money? And you have to come up with those multi-tiered packages, and you have to come up with creative ways like the the gummy and yeah, um, Trent Reznor, there's a good case study on him I was showing class and he talks about the multi-tiered package prices and stuff and the touring, you know, the, the tickets are a good way. Also sponsorships, sponsorships are really important. Placing music is really important. Um, so you really gotta think outside the box and take it to that next level. And um, there's a lot of new media publishers out there today like Jingle Punks and Rumblefish and um, there's a bunch of different small companies that are helping artists in different ways, place their music, find sponsors, uh, and, you know, et cetera. So, yeah. I was just going to take it another direction real for, for a second. Uh, if you guys maybe hadn't thought about it, maybe you have, is it, when you're thinking about your goals as far as obviously the goal is to make money by selling something, whatever it is your product is, whether it's, uh, you know, physical art or if it's music or whatnot, keep in mind that maybe while you're trying to figure out uh, how you're doing, other than just looking at sales or, or looking at that sort of thing, look at look at the analytics for your digital properties. If you have a website, make sure that you can view it through Google Analytics. Look to see where people are coming from. How often has no one visited in a week? Maybe your content isn't great. Maybe you haven't posted anything. Same thing on Facebook. Look to see how many you know you can see this many people viewed your post or whatnot. You can. If you really want to spend some more money into it, you can you know, do Facebook ads. You can do cost per click campaigns if you, if you really want to get into that kind of stuff. Um, even a trick on Facebook, if you're curious about your audience, is act like you're going to make an ad and say, go through the whole steps of, I want to target uh, men from you know, 20 to 35, and, and you go all the way through the process. Uh, Facebook will tell you exactly how many people that would reach. You don't actually have to buy the ad, but you know that's, that's what your demographic is on Facebook for what you just selected, how many people that is. So that's a little trick to just kind of throw out there. Uh, but definitely keep, a, keep an eye on your analytics. All great advice, guys. Um, so most of our students are familiar with electronic press kits. You guys have all heard of EPKs, I'm assuming? at this point, probably. Um, so if you haven't heard of it, it's a prepackaged set of promotional materials related to a person or a brand. Um, so at what stage in an artist's career should they start worrying about an EPK? I mean, is this something they need to do from the beginning? Can they wait? What do you guys think? I, I think that they should have it as long as they have a story to tell. So obviously, if you have nothing going on, if you really don't have enough of a story to spread, you know, kind of save it until you have something important to say. Uh, this kind of moves a little, way, a little bit away from EPKs, which are awesome because you can include links to all your media. But the one thing I will tell you never to do 
And as a side note, I see this every single day, and I've seen this for the better part of 15, 16 years, is don't send files unsolicited. So I can't tell you how aggravating it is um, to receive all kinds of emails from folks that I don't know, that I really don't care about, and they're all sending me, you know, 10, 20 gig, uh, megabyte files that are just eating up all the space in my inbox. And then the stuff that I want to see, I'm not going to be able to get because I have a limit and it's been reached. And what do I do? I click, I don't even open it. I click at the top and all of those go away like this. So <laughs> don't send, you can send an EPK, but don't send files uh, unless somebody asks for the files. And at, the, at this point with SoundCloud and all the, you know, great sites that are available even to host stuff on the cloud, it's not really necessary to send files. Yeah. Great, great tips. Um, so as far as ways we can stay educated, I mean, this is a, a very quickly evolving, fast-paced environment, this digital marketing world. How can we stay in tuned and educated, motivated when it comes to learning about these things? I would say just explore. Click on everything and everything around the internet. If you see an article about something that maybe sounds like it could be something, you could just read it. You never know. Uh, even if even if currently it's not something that you can put to use down the line when they add in another feature, may, you know, and you're the first one on it, you've been using it for a little while, it's going to pay off in the long run. I would also follow if you subscribe, like do RSS feeds, subscribe to whatever you can that, that's a little... Uh, tech marketing minded, start talking to other people, see what they do. Uh, I would, I would just say that this is never going to stop evolving at this point. It's digital. You know, the internet changes overnight. It's worldwide. When we go to sleep, Australia's up. So, just, just never, never think that what you're doing's enough. Ever. There's always something new coming down the line. Just to add to that, look at other industries. I think we kind of get stuck in saying, okay, what's happening in the music? And then again, we get into this rut where everybody's trying to do the same thing and we see the same trends just kind of go on until they just get boring. You know, look at other forms of media. Look and see what independent authors are doing. You know, Heather mentioned, you know, visual artists. See what they're doing, you know, and get inspiration from that. Probably one of the most interesting examples that I've seen of that actually was on the author side was an author that took the indie band approach, right? Like generally an author writes a book and he was signed to a major publishing house. And, you know, you would go out and you would do a book tour, you would go to a Barnes and Noble someplace and then hope that people were there at two o'clock in the afternoon on a Wednesday when you just happened to have that stop uh, put together by your publisher. And what he decided to do was to post on his blog, listen, Instead of doing this, instead of spending all this money, maybe visiting 20, 30 stores, instead I want to go to your house. If you're a, you know, a fan of my work, if you could guarantee that you're going to get at least 20 people to come to your house, and by the way, as a side note, if I could crash on your couch, even better, <laughs> because that's going to give me more money to visit more places. And that's historically been something that, you know, small independent bands have always done. They've always done like little living room shows and crashed on people's couches, <laughs> et cetera, et cetera. And this author took a page from the indie band world and applied it. So do the same thing. Look at all these other, you know, related media industries mm -hmm. and get inspiration from that. Because when you do it, you know, it's going to be new. It's going to be novel in your world. Something to think about. Same thing with genres, right? Like if you're into hip hop, if you're into punk, if you're into screamo, you kind of know everything that's happening there. Well, what about looking at maybe a uh, classical artist and applying some of the things that, you know, that artist is doing into your world, right? Yeah, I have two things. Uh, Digitalmusicnews.com. Check that out. And uh, they have a newsletter. You get that. I think it's, I think it's every day I get it. Seems like almost every day I get a lot of newsletters. Um, but that one's a really good one, and you should read it as much as possible because they have all the top digital music news um, uh, articles there. So check that out, Digital Music News. And then also, um, like I said earlier, watch other artists. Go to their website and see what, what they have on their site because it, whatever they're using, whatever digital stuff they're using is going to be on their website. So you can go to the big superstars, go to Justin Bieber's site, go to you know, Madonna's site, go to Lady Gaga's site, go to the big guys and see what the superstars are using because whatever they're using is probably you know, something that you should look into at least. You know, see what they're using, that's all. Mm -hmm. That's good. Um, so everybody's on 
online now, right? It's a very, it's becoming a, quite a crowded space in a way, especially when you're trying to compete with other musicians, mu other artists. We're all in this environment. Um, can you think of any exceptional examples? And I'll give you one example that I can think of off the top of my head. Any of you guys know who Amanda Palmer is? Do you know who she is? Okay, she's an artist. She had a very successful Kickstarter campaign where she, um, she was a, an unknown artist that nobody really knew about, but she's over the top with personality, okay? Um, and so she created this Kickstarter campaign. It was successful. She met her goal, but she was offering some really insane, crazy, attention-getting things as part of her campaign um, to where, like, people that paid a certain amount as part of her campaign, they would show up at an event, and she would show up naked, and they could sign her body, for example, okay? So she did these things, and yes, it's over the top, it's eccentric, but, I mean, what can, what can people do to get noticed in an environment? I mean, without being an Amanda Palmer, where you show up naked and have people sign your body. I mean, what do you guys think? Oh, I like the Pretty Lights idea of putting it on Pirate Bay and promoting it on Pirate Bay. I think that's just pretty innovative, um, just saying, hey, it's free, it's on Pirate Bay. You know, something like that would be good. Uh, I, I, Amanda Palmer is the poster child for any type of inspiration as an independent artist. I've interviewed her. I've also interviewed her previous manager. Um, look at the video if you haven't seen. Look at the video, The Art of Asking. I mean, I think that's, I mean, talk about inspiration. Uh, another artist that I'm a big fan of, and, and I'm going to talk a little bit about physical products, but Jack White, how many folks are familiar with Jack White? He makes all kinds of interesting and really uh, elaborate packages of physical products, right? And we're talking about a physical product. But what they do, because it's kind of hard to really express how interesting and how much care was taken in making this product, is that they post videos, you know, showing like the assembly line of how this thing was made. And then, of course, include music and all this kind of stuff. And that really sells, as far as I'm concerned, the product. I mean, they're always limited edition. In some cases, they're hundreds of dollars, um, you know, so recently they released the uh, Paramount box set that was released like an old time uh, phonograph uh, player. You know, I mean, talk about amazing, you know, craftsmanship and they use, you know, video to show what these things are and also just make them fun and interesting. Um, so look at folks like that, you know, maybe, you know, outside of the, you know, the top artists on Billboard, look at folks that are really impactful in their niches and take a page from their from their world and see if you could apply it to you. Not identically, but you know, use it as inspiration. I think that's all really great advice. I'd also say that a lot of times, a lot of things you can do since it's in a digital space, maybe isn't gonna even cost you anything. So if you try something and it doesn't work, okay, as long as it doesn't, as long as you didn't go a little too out there and it's reflecting you negatively, so you let that go and you move on to the next thing. So don't don't be afraid to afraid to try something just because it's never been done before, even if you're not quite sure it's going to work. If you just have this idea and something inside of you is telling you that this, this could be a really great thing for you, just, just go for it. Just do it. That's all really great advice. We're going to be... Uh I have the microphone's working. There it goes. Um, we're going to be opening up the floor for questions. So if any students have um, any uh, questions, if you want to come over and line up right on over here, um, we'll be taking questions over here. I just want to say something about Facebook. Everybody <laughs> thinks they can use Facebook and just get on there and use it for free and promote and do great and sell music. And, and you really have to pay for Facebook advertising. Mm -hmm. And um, when you have an album release and you want to release that on Facebook, do an advertisement to your connected audience. And when you go into Facebook and you do advertisement, it'll say connected or unconnected. And, uh, and connected are the people that are connected to your Facebook page. And you're just advertised to them because it only shows to like a few, per, very tiny percentage. Like less than 10% yeah. unless yeah. you pay for exposure. Yeah, so you have to so. pay on Facebook. I just want to put that out there. <laughs> okay, as you guys um, ask your questions, please make sure you tell us your name and your program. Oh. Morning, panelists. My name is John Paul Feronda. I'm currently in the Music Business Bachelor's program. Um, when we're speaking of marketing and of branding yourself, um, do you think that trends in the industry, um, music industry and whatnot, um, affect artists and uh, the genres that actually become relevant? In other words, um, do, do current events and do current trends in media affect which artists we hear about and which music is heard? 
That's a good question. Uh, I, think, I think it does in a way. I think especially when you're talking about artists, I don't know if you're talking about uh, some of the bigger artists. I know working with Sony Music, a lot of times they go through waves of, you know, we're signing a lot of artists that, that not necessarily sound the same, but they're, it, they would be grouped within the same genre. And I definitely think that's coming from somewhere, whether it's uh, they're wearing... You know, they're wearing the fashion that's emerging. It's come, you know, so the fashion's kind of there, and maybe, uh, maybe it's a, a newer hot spot that people have been moving to, and these bands are from there. So I definitely think there's things um, around the world. You know, you can get all of a sudden bands coming in from, you know, Germany or wherever are, are becoming a thing. And I definitely think that current events are are a huge influence on that. Just, just as a quick note, just historically, I think a perfect example for that is the prolifer pro proliferation of gangster rap in, you know, in hip hop, right? Like, you started to have movies in the early 90s, and you had a few groups that were kind of like, you know, really making a presence for themselves, and that kind of tipped the scales. And then for the next 20 years, right, it dominates, you know, the sound and the trends, and mm -hmm. it gets tired as far as I'm concerned. <laughs> Uh, my name is G. I'm an entertainment business program. I'm also an engineer, uh, producer as well. Uh, my question is, um, well, I'm mainly just thinking about, well, I'm not just thinking about the U.S., I'm also thinking about overseas because going to going gold or platinum is different in other countries. So I was wondering if you know of any social sites mentioned or not mentioned that are big overseas but may not be big here. There are some, especially uh, in Asia. They have their own social media platforms that, I mean, they'll, sometimes people will be on, you know, Facebook also, but they'll, I think in Japan, I want to say it's mixy maybe, but to be honest, you're not going to get really any benefit from being on that unless you kind of already have a following. It's all in, you know, a different language completely. Like you're, you're just not going to, and it's, and it's used differently just because they have the social media platform. Uh, for example, they're, you know, they might spend most of their time uh, posting pictures that they're almost kind of faux photoshopping. It really has nothing to do with music or uh, I, I don't know that that's the best way to really break into overseas is using, using social media that you're not really a part of. Hi, um, my name is Luis Padron. I'm a former graduate for, from the Entertainment Business Masters working for Play Pro Media right now. My question is, uh, when you're promoting local artists on Twitter specifically, um, and you're promoting singles or an event or whatever you're promoting, how can you avoid uh, you know, those kinds of fans looking at your timeline and saying, no, this is spam, because you're simply like copying and pasting every single uh, message and just mentioning different people in your local area? Mm -hmm. I mean, besides of the little tip of like changing your writing or, you know, changing the way you spread your, your message, what else can you recommend to avoid people watching you or perceive, perceiving you as a spammer? Oh, I've got this one. I, that's a pet peeve of mine. I hate spammers on Twitter. I don't know about the rest of you guys. <laughs> but um, you have to have that two-way communication. So it's about you know a, having a conversation on Twitter, not just you know, posting scores from a, a game or, you know, things of that nature. It's two way. So um, rule of thumb, I like to say, and I was actually on a panel where they said it was even more, but I would say for every like six tweets that you have, five of those should be interacting with someone in some capacity, whether it be retweeting, um, you know, commenting, you know, something of that nature instead of just blasting out information and content. So that's my two cents on that. I don't know if you guys have anything to add. Uh, just one word, engagement. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and don't sell on Twitter. You really shouldn't sell. You can promote, but yep. don't sell on Twitter. It's, it's a, a social media platform. Just be careful because you do become, you come, become spammy when you try to sell on Twitter. People don't like that. No problem. Hi, uh, my name is Clovis. I'm in the master's program in the entertainment business and full sale. Um, I was just wanting to ask you guys, uh, I mean, we talked a lot about um, releasing your content on digital marketing strategies and stuff like that, and BitTorrent um, being a free you know, system, but like, what would you suggest for artists that are trying to maintain some kind of proprietary ownership of their content? And uh, like, releasing that on social media, how would they maintain their rights to that? 
um, and, and, and not have it just be thieved off of the internet? Well, the rights are given. I mean, you, you, you are always going to maintain the rights to your work. Uh, I think the problem, and maybe I'm misunderstanding, maybe are you, are you addressing piracy? Well, pi piracy as, as well as um, just overall, uh, you know, people copying your, your work. I, I think that, and, and this has been the case forever, I mean, clearly everybody has their own goals and their own thoughts about how they're going to approach, you know, getting their art out there. But I think the bigger problem is is really obscurity. So, you know, uh, I've always, you know, and this is something that I've told plenty of artists, you know, when they, in the earlier days of file sharing, they would say, well, people are going to steal my stuff. And I would say, don't worry about uh, piracy, worry about obscurity. So, I mean, that's just my take on it. The hardest thing to do is to get people to listen. Really, that's so. Uh, I, piracy to me is just kind of old news, and it's not. I mean, really, you want to get the word out there. You want to get the music out there. So your goal should be to make money in other ways. So I wouldn't worry so much about that. And once you record it, it's your music, you know. Um, and you can always prove that with the recording. Um, I'm, we're not lawyers, though, so maybe that would be better for one of our, our law teachers. I'm not sure. I mean, it hasn't really panned out, right? For, like, the biggest, well-funded, you know, companies with the biggest resources, you know, fighting piracy, as far as I'm concerned, hasn't really worked out for them. Mm -hmm. I mean, just something to think about. If you have a second question, you can go to the end of the line and come back. Let's talk afterwards. Yeah. 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 I was going to say, too, from a visual art standpoint, because you see a lot of people ripping off other artists' artwork, too, and, and that's, that's hard. So, I mean, I think just a, a gentle reminder, maybe like putting some copyright, you know, watermark or something along those lines on your art is helpful yeah. mm -hmm. whenever you're using it in a social space because people will just take your stuff, and sometimes they'll, if it's another artist, they might just use that as inspiration or they yeah. may just want to use of, of your photo as a print and they'll print it out instead of paying you for a print. So you kind of have to do what you can to protect yourself in that environment. I, I do have one more thing on that. Make sure that you register with the either BMI or ASCAP yes. and also with sound exchange mm -hmm. when you have a recording for the internet. So you'd have to, if you register with those, you're pretty good. So. Uh, hello, my name is Sean. Um, an RA student. Mm -hmm. And um, just to add on on the end, I know you brought up earlier about an artist that did the video game and the music. I think that was Fallout Boy. I'm not 100%, but I think that's what it that's, was. That isn't the one I was talking about. A few artists have done that, but that wasn't the one I was okay, thinking okay. about. But yeah. But my, my essential question is this. Um, I know as artists, there are a lot of services that they offer online. And I know definitely having a website is something that is definitely essential at this point. Uh, my question is, uh, what are some? What is a realistic budget that you should set aside, and what is like? What should you be investing in, and what should you not put your money towards as far as trying to get your your services and your name and your music out there? Because I know people will take advantage of it. Just give me your money. I, I can do this and that. Like, what services should you be investing in, not investing in, and what's the realistic budget to have to decide for that? I think a lot of it has to do with what works for you and, you know, what you're trying to get out there. But in regards to budgets and how to get this stuff made, uh, my input would be to go on a website like Freelancer or Elance. And what you could do there is it has all these qualified um, contractors and you could actually see what work they've done. The only people that could actually post feedback are people that have paid them. So it's not like they're putting up stuff saying like they're the best ever. Like the people you're hearing from are people that actually hired them. And the company actually has the money in escrow. So in other words, you know, they're not going to get paid until they do the job, right? And you could also include different uh, benchmarks. So once they do this, they get paid this amount. Once they do this, they get half, et cetera, et cetera. And you could actually see what their results are, you know, how many people have hired them, how, how much money they've made, what the satisfaction rate is, et cetera, et cetera. And you might be surprised. You put up, let's say you want an app, you want a website, whatever it is that you're trying to get made, a video game, you put that job up. It's free to, you know, to put it up. And you might be shocked that you'll get, you know, 20, 30, 40, 50 different, you know, companies and in some cases just individuals that have those skills and they're basically competing and bidding for your work. Yeah. Yeah, those are good. Also, um, with... Uh Money, uh, it's really important to have money for 
some type of advertising promotion. That's that's really you know marketing and promotion. That's that's what you should be spending your money on. Um, of course, you have to spend money on the recording. You just have to decide what's important for the artist. How what are the revenue stream, streams we're going to make? You know how much money can we make? And then um, from there, how much money should we put into this project and how? And I always say marketing dollars are the, the best. And, the, and if I could add one more thing, and don't underestimate your own skills and your own talents, right? So I can't tell you how many times, you know, I mean, we've all seen artists that show people, you know, how to play guitar. I've seen folks, you know, teach people how to make a beat or how to use a particular piece of equipment. And if they're that proficient in it, you know, and that talented, you know, you might go in and kind of follow the path and find out more about them. So, you know, clearly, you know, in business, you're going to spend money, but also don't overlook things that you could do for yourself to, you know, create that attention. Yeah, like creating your own website. There's so many website design programs now that you can, like Wix, I know you mentioned, Squarespace. I mean, there's, there's so many out there that you don't have to hire a designer to do your website. And I'm sure web developers probably don't want me saying that, but you don't necessarily have to now with those um, resources. So I, you know, if that's not something you do well though, like maybe you just don't have an eye at all for design, <laughs> then you might want to find someone that can maybe help point you in the right direction. But now there's a lot of shortcuts that you don't really have to pay for those services that were once thousands of dollars. I would so. say sometimes the more research you do, the less money you're going to end up spending. It's time versus money sometimes. Yeah. So, thank you. Hey, uh, my name's Rich Sibley. I'm from the RA, the Recording Arts Bachelor's Program. Um, I'll try to be as brief as possible, but uh, uh, if, I'm, if I'm like an independent person and I know all these websites like SoundCloud and Reverb Nation to get my music put out there, um, I'm trying to, um, you know, be creative. Like I took all your advice about being interactive, having a website, creating videos or something like that. Um, I've like I've got a GoPro and I've got you know I try to record stuff every day. Um, one thing I notice with music videos is that <clears throat> uh, artists, music musicians, they tend to just have videos of themselves performing or singing, and it's just showing them, and um, it gets redundant and it gets tiring. Um, some and I know people who just they throw their music up on YouTube without a video, just a picture. So I was wondering if you know any websites or any pro. Um, any ways that I can like get like like digital um, digital videos or like animation or something like that to, to make it like if I'm if I'm putting my music out there make it more creative like I'm telling a story and that that type of thing. Uh, also, you know, like I've I've tried to go on Connect and, and say, hey, anybody interested in this? And then they're you know I'm 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 talking about like at a low budget or you know it's just part of a project because a lot of people are won't work for free. They're like, oh, I can do this for fifty bucks or a hundred bucks or something. Mm -hmm. Well, there, there's a lot of tools out there for creating. I mean, just off the top of my head, I'm not saying that you're going to have, you know, the most sophisticated and polished video ever, but depending on how you use it, there's a company um, called Animoto. Anybody ever hear of Animoto? It, it's pretty awesome because it's like, you know, you upload your images, you upload your video, you upload your music, and you basically could create an automated video. You could change it, you could edit it. Doesn't cost really any money. They have a subscription, you know, it's a freemium kind of thing. So if you want more, you know, effects and this kind of thing, you might pay five bucks a month, 10 bucks a month. There's a website called Go Animate, which allows you to create animation. A lot of uh, companies use it to kind of do, you know, uh, online infomercials and that kind of stuff. But there's no reason that you can't create, you know, animation on it. And, and use that for a video. So, I mean, there's plenty of websites out there that help you uh, create and help you, you know, kind of tap into some of the automated features that are out there that are not gonna cost you real money anyway. And then collaboration. You know, there's always gonna be, you know, maybe a film student that's looking to build a portfolio and they might be willing to collaborate with you and maybe do a short as opposed to a music video because that's, you know, pretty typical is maybe make a, a film short or something like that. Yeah, and also iMovie um, has some really good tools for putting together videos and um, YouTube has features now that you can use on the back end when you upload a video. It's like, oh, do you want to edit and do all these fun things to it? You know, you can add little, you know, blurbs and stuff, so. I would say also, this is a, a very specific thing, but don't ever be afraid to kind of learn something new while you're in the process of 
your one goal anyway. So if your goal is to make a video and you don't want it just to be band playing or, or whatnot, so maybe get a bunch of friends together and maybe test out, you know, maybe you're really good at making stop motion videos, you know, and you just learn something new or just think about other things. Just watch a ton of videos. Look at other bits and pieces and, and, and make your own thing out of it, you know, and, and maybe what even maybe you don't like to do, but maybe some of your friends think, hey, I'm bored, I have some time, I would love to try that, and then just go from there. Yeah, also another thing you could do um, is you could uh, take, like, this, take the actual video of the performance and then take a mashup of the fans, you know, videotaping and doing stuff as well mm -hmm. and integrate that video into an iMovie so that you, yeah, so you could crowdsource it and, like, have, um, have the video, the same, you know, all the different videos streaming together and edited, but you could have that same, the same recording, you know, so that it sounds good still. So you're not using all those different recordings of the audio. Have you seen the Facebook look back video thing that they did? Kind of. Take a look at it. <laughs> just something, just another asset, you know, that kind of spreads your brand and your music. Yeah. All right, great. So those were all excellent questions. We want to thank you guys for listening to us today and attending our session. And I especially want to uh, thank Israel, Brandy, and Lydia for doing such a great job on our panel today. So. Thanks, Heather. <laughs>